You're listening to Two Chunks in a Hunk, a movie podcast where we give pumps and dumps. Hello and welcome to Two Chunks and a Hunk. My name is Jordan Wonders and this week I am your chunk. Mm -hmm. And I'm Doge and hunk is no one night stand, that's right. Hunk is a long-term commitment. Oh, no. You got some Woody Harrelson tongue in your Matthew yeah, McConaughey. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm Carter. Unattached? Currently. <laughs> Likewise. Surprising. Psycho? Rarely. Interested? Perhaps. Hungry? Starving? Leaving? Now? Oh, wait, I meant Chunk. <laughs> oh, wait, you left out. <laughs> you know, you're like, when does Chunk happen? I did your whole scene. <laughs> Sorry, I got so engrossed I in the scene. I don't remember. You if, were lost in your character. I got lost. I don't I got remember lost. if you, you said lost. your word either. I got Doge. lost. I did. I did. You did? I said hunk at the beginning. He was a hunk from the start. I was a hunk at the beginning. <laughs> I can already feel this grating on my last ones. <laughs> Whatever those are, I only have a couple left. <laughs> you know you're sharing the studio with two world class. Oh, world class. It's the, your Harrelson tongue is so strong. I think it's so good. It's very good. With a little Harrelson so tongue. That like, you know what I mean? Blah, blah, blah. That like, a lot, a lot. It's like, a lot, a lot, like the Lion King. Hey, just take a second yeah. and pretend that Woody Harrelson is voicing Yoshi. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> That's gross. He had to be here in person for that. He's just like extra funny. Bring hop. <laughs> Bring God. hops. Mario, climb on my back. <laughs> I can't. That I was can't. almost a Michael Shannon. I know. I can't. Bring I don't hop. know the it's difference like the bring, between. Bring I can't hop. do a Woody Harrelson at it's, all. I don't think. Your R's and your L's are all the way back in your mouth. Just swallow those boys. That's crazy. I know. Hey, Dutch. Hey. Did you say the hunk one? I did. Tell indeed. us. Tell us more. It's because the next time you see me, I will be a brand new Doge. And there are two small reasons and one big reason. Don't cut your hair. Do not no, cut your hair. I'm not going to. Okay. I'm super not going to. Okay. The two small reasons are, well, I'll give you these. It, I'll be a brand new Doge because of these three factors. Relaxation. Great. Location. Excellent. And hydration. You are going to have a vacation to Schlitterbahn. It's a, it's a, it's a three-point system. <laughs> Which I would argue is none proven. of those three things. <laughs> P. So the relaxation. Uh, we just bought new sheets for our bed. Oh. And they're supposed to be comfy. Talk and so to me about re- that thread relaxation. I don't even count? know because it's Brooklyn. and Because oh, yeah. we're millennials and we did the online ones. Ah. Uh, the hydration is because I just finally bought a new water filter for my fridge. Whoa. Which has been overdue for a year. I'm, I'm growing up in the Actual world making big water purchases. now. Yeah, there exactly. That's great. It's going to be weird to not be able to chew on your water anymore. I know. It's going to, it's going to be good. It's like the soap that comes with like the scrubbies in it already. You know what I mean? Yeah. I thought you were going to talk about the soap from I last week. No, I'm not going to fall in that black hole again. I, um, I'm going to miss the sweet, delicious, garlicky taste of your fridge hey, water. Hey, that was my old apartment. That was not this house. <laughs> that was true. my first apartment. All the water tasted really like garlic. Uh, but the third one is the most important. I'm going to be a brand new doge by the location factor. And here's what I mean by that. Today, I was supposed to go to work, and instead, after I had been at work for an hour, Jess texted me. I was like, hey, where are my keys? I drove her car yesterday. She was like, where on earth are my keys? And I was like, are they in the pocket of the shorts I was wearing yesterday? And she was like, no. I said, are they on the floor somewhere? And she was like, no. I'm anxious. Just Are they hanging up like where we usually hang our keys? No. So... She just had to leave, and I came home. I left to work early, and I was like, hey, I, I'm just going to go home, like, find my wife's keys really quick. I'll be right back, I promise. Five hours of my life looking for these keys. No. Did not find these no. keys anywhere until I retraced my steps, and I thought, okay, when I got out of the car, I had cups from Cane's. I had thrown these keys in the trash. I, I went full on dad diving in with latex gloves, opened my trash. The keys were under about two pounds of meat that had rotted while we were out of town oh. over the past oh. week. I had to fish those boys out and I immediately got on Amazon and bought some of those little Bluetooth key locators. Nice. And so now, the next time you see me, those will have come in the mail and I will be a doge who knows the location 
of everything that's important to him. Wow. That was my day today though. Digging through trash, looking for keys. Dude, At I one point we were like, feeling. we were like, maybe they've been stolen. Maybe I left them yep. in the door and somebody's going to come in and kill me and take all my stuff. Yep. I thought you were going to say that you left them in Colorado. Oh, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. No, I only threw them away under some nasty old meat. Gross. You know? I'm just shocked you didn't need it. No, see, I was going yeah. to. I yeah. was trying Thanks. so hard not to. Thanks, guys. <laughs> because, yeah. Give me one of those classic Jordan Wonders transitions into the, the meat, the non-rotted <clears throat> meat, the good meat of our podcast. Here we go. Here we go. Speaking of losing things, there's something I don't want to lose. Mm. And it's a guy. In how many days? Any length of time, really, but specifically 10 of them. Mm-hmm. That's right. The movie that we're speaking of today, But a Wee Flaky Transition. <laughs> <laughs> but a Wee Flaky. That movie is How, how to, to Lose, lose a, a Guy, guy in, in 10 days. days. I was tasked with making this transition, and uh, you killed I think it. I nailed it, guys. Let me tell you, you prepared that to perfection. Mm. You nailed it. Thank you. Thank how you many so times much. have you tried to f- say this movie? And you said ten, some version of 10 things I hate about you. Virtually Almost every, every time. time. Yeah. Almost every time. Every single time. I'll be like, we're watching 10 how to, how, ten ways how to, to, how to, to lose a guy. How to lose 10 in days. <laughs> 10 things I hate about guys. And losing them. <laughs> Speaking of losing other things. I'm going to use the same transition twice. Doge, help me lose myself in this story by giving me a synopsis of what goes down. Look, if you only have one shot, one opportunity to seize everything. Wow. He's taken aback, junkies. The goal, the goal is for people to want to listen to this. Oh, okay. oh we have to start oh, from the okay. ground up. <laughs> this week's synopsis comes from <laughs> comes from an IMDb Regardless. user. It's not Nick Reganis. Come on, man. Comes from an IMDb user whose username is, once again, their full email address. (laughs) Golly, people. So this is RCS0411 at who knows what email server. Benjamin, an ad executive, is trying to land a big account, only his boss thinks that it needs a feminine touch, so he considers giving it to a couple of female execs. Benjamin, that is fully the reverse of how this movie starts, yes. by the way. Yeah, Benjamin 100%. makes a wager with them that if he can get a woman to fall in love with him, he gets the account. He lets the female execs choose the girl. They choose Andy, Whoa. a writer for Composure Magazine, whom they had met earlier and learned she is doing an article called How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. Knowing that she's going to be impossible, they don't tell him that. Ben <laughs> tries his best to woo her while she does her best to drive him away. It's like the the beginning of this movie they watched was different. It's like they watched the alternate edit, the Benjamin edit. Right. Like the Andy the, edit. What's the little puzzle that has the little slide piece? It's like a slide puzzle where it's Rubik's like everything's Cube. no no no. It's like a flat and like everything's out of place yeah, and, and you have like to a find slide, the a slide puzzle. Like that's a slide that's what the plot is before yeah. we get a hold of it. It's yeah. just like all these different ways that we've got to just line it up for it to make sense. <laughs> but like there was that's how to lose a guy in ten days. Yeah, sure basically. it is. So shall we dive? Let's go. Oh, yeah. All right, let's do this. First things first, we got Andy. Got Andy. And she be working at that magazine. What's working the name of it magazine. again? Composure. 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 Yeah. Total rip of Cosmopolitan. Yes. Absolutely. 100%. Mm-hmm. And she is the, uh, what, is, what does she call herself? The list girl? The how-to uh, girl. How-to, how-to girl, girl. Yeah. yeah. She so, writes all the how-to articles. But she wants to move on to bigger and better things. Like politics and the environment and things right. like that. Yeah. And her, uh, I guess the editor that lady's role was never made supremely clear to me. That is composure. She, th- that Her is, name is composure. The character is composure. Yeah. Miss Composure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, that is Fraser's girlfriend, and I think wife for a little bit, maybe, in Cheers. Mm. Do you know that? Toss salad and scrambled eggs. Nope. Which Woody Harrelson is in. Mm. Which, which is he how, was in True Detective with Matt McConaughey. Is how Matthew McConaughey got this role. There it is. Because time is a flat circle. There it is. It's, a flat it's an illusion. Very good. It's an very illusion good. that very you good. just very good. Very buy good. into. So, very good. Miss Composure, um, the editor of Composure, yeah. is basically like, how about you stick to the things that you know? And she's like, but, 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 but please. Yep. And then she's like, okay, if you can nail an article for me, I'll let you write whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Into she's, Benjamin. She's really like, yeah. I mean, Kate's coming in to be like, or Andy's coming in to be like, Volunteer for tribute, Katniss Everdeen, her friend. Like, right. 
Oh, dump no. on that. That did not hang together well for me at all. Yeah, that's weird. That's a really bad reason to do this oh, article. Yeah. But um, Catherine Hahn is so funny yeah. in oh, this yeah. movie. I think she's good in everything. I agree. I've never seen something that she's in that is not funny she's to me. She's so funny. I completely agree. She's a lot of the times in the movies that are like... Uh, what best in show in, in films like that? Mm-hmm. Is that the yeah. crew that she usually runs with? What is it? Something lizard, right? Oh, I can't remember the name of the main guy. It's people who do like uh uh spinal tap yeah, and yeah, all yeah, those yeah. things. Yeah. It's Rob Reiner. Rob Reiner's in charge of a lot of that stuff, isn't he? Yeah, he's a big part of it, I think. Love that. Very much. That's not our only sleepless in Seattle connection, but we'll get there. Oh no. <laughs> That's true. Blatant. So we've got Ben. He mm-hmm. rides a motorcycle. Motorcycle rider. He wears a leather jacket. Leather yeah. jacket. And he is Matthew McConaughey. Oh my goodness. Yep. And Welcome boy, to, isn't he? Boy, it's taken two chunks too long. It's taken us almost two years Way to, too long to, to Matthew get to McConaughey. McConaughey on this podcast. Yeah. It, I mean, it is kind of wild that it has taken this long, right? Right. He is <clears throat> truly something to behold in every meaning of the word. Yep. Could have sworn he was in Harry Potter. I thought it was going to happen then, but nope. <laughs> here he is now. <laughs> He writes about cologne and sports and what was it? Was the other thing? He's advertising. Yeah, he's an ad ad boy. But what does he call it? Beer and sports equipment or something like yeah, that. Yeah, something like that is essentially yeah. what he writes. And his uh, his partners are the guy whose name I can't remember and, are, and is hilarious. They're funny. And the guy who plays Wrench from <laughs> Fargo. Yeah, yeah, very good. Love them. Both. It's weird to me to live in a post McConaissance world to see him in these kinds of roles. Yeah, earlier, you know what I mean. Well, and this because is what pigeonholed him, like this kind I of think stuff so too. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's just weird. It is it's a little weird. Little weird. But the yeah. charm is on full force for real. Love it. Full throttle. I 100%. mean, completely love it. And uh, you know, he's taking his shirt off. He's taking his shirt off in his office. Pretty Ladies early. Are watching. Taking his shirt off in his office. Pretty early. <laughs> but he decides that he wants to pitch himself as the guy to run the diamond account yeah, he's for like, no, that's me. Um, Delauer. Trying which to break is, free. They're both doing kind of the same thing. They are. They're both trying to do a little something different. They are. Speaking of pigeonholing. This feels like a better hitch, the way mm. that they're doing this. You know what I mean? Because where both sides are in on something both, like that. Where both are being detestable. Oh, for sure. You know what I mean? The, yes. And it, it makes the... It feels way more earned later when we turn it around. Yep. I agree with that very much. But this is when we start to get the, he's scheming something mm-hmm. and she's scheming something. Mm-hmm. And now they collide. Love this kind of thing. Yes. I think this is it done well. And I try to not let the charm of Matt blind me. Yeah. But legitimately, fun writing. We talked about the proposal, knowing what it was early and just sticking with that. This feels like How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days does the same thing. Because when you think rom-com, like most of the time when you have these two things separated, there's a certain part of re- uh, that is not necessarily reality in some of it. Like super romance movies right. or comedy. Like the ridiculous things, like The Hangover, Bridesmaids. That's yeah. never really happened to anybody sure, it's before. It's an escalated right. sense of reality. An escalated right. sense of reality is such a good way to put it. And th- it, this is a great mix, honestly. I agree. Like I, I think they do it really well. I completely well right agree. Now. You led me to it. That's... My super pump Heck yeah. is the the writing and the tone of this. Yes, it felt Shakespearean in the way that he I writes rom coms. And it's because we have, I think I counted when I was watching it. I think we have three distinct Greek choruses that are offering different perspectives. Like his two friends are a Greek chorus. Yep, her two friends are a Greek chorus. Yeah, what was the other one? There was another one that it's was not like the family. Yeah, there's like another. I feel like it's the bosses. Probably, yeah. There's like another, ah, man, that's going to bug me. I should have written that down. But there's like another group of people. Like we have these kind of homogenous groups of people that are 100%. pushing our leads in different directions, encouraging and they, them they to do They effectively things. each have identical sides. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. It's so fun. It, mm-hmm. And it, it helps it feel balanced because something yeah. that I think about a lot with this movie, my, so it's, it's the same thing when like, if you if you ever use like Reddit or something like that, and you're looking at something that is supposed to make you mad. And it's like, I don't want to like, like this. Right. You know, I want to downvote this because I hate it, but I'm supposed to hate it. So do I like it? It's one of those right. things for me where it's like it the whole idea of we're both making these weird wagers skeeves me out a lot. Yeah. And it's like I, I hate it. But I'm supposed to. You know, yeah, like right. we're supposed to. And so yeah. it succeeds in grossing me out. And I think that that is a credit to where they take it. Yeah. Because I think if it had not been handled well and had not been taken in a good direction, yeah. then all of a sudden, this is a movie about two like 
irreparably broken people that will just do anything to get their way. Absolutely. Yep. Well, and, th- and that's the thing that I'm I'm learning as we go through more of these rom coms is that I think the best way to enjoy it is you have to turn off your thinking brain a little bit and just turn on your movie brain. Yeah, we because, talked like, earlier how it's like there's a, so much of this where it's like that is a horrible found like regardless of if they end up together that's a terrible foundation. Right, for your and that's the thing too. And we talked about it. A little bit on, I can't remember which one. It might have been Sweet Home Alabama, but like... Sweet Home sweet home what? Babalama. Thank okay. you. This is, this is a table with a lot of testosterone, right? This is three men yeah. that love the Fast and Furious series, but we have some trouble with rom-com. shirts off in the right? office. It's the, and Chelsea had a good conversation with me too. My wife was just kind of like, that's what, that, that's what this is for us. Like, we never go into these things with our brain on. It's just like heart wide open kind of thing like just just soak it in and so that's a good comparison that's exactly what this is you yeah. have to just go into it and that's that is how you feel about some like romantic comedies of shakespeare i think our one of sure. our favorite if not our collectively favorite uh movie that we've done is a direct rip of shakespeare yeah, yeah. right taming of the shrew and yep. things i hate about you and so yeah i, I almost same called vibe. it how to lose a guy in 10 days there you go <sighs> every time i'm I, glad we didn't do those in the same year i know that i have to pause a little bit right before but i, I think it's a mm-hmm. learned skill to be able to go into these movies and turn my brain off a little bit mm-hmm. same with fast and furious it took me halfway through the series to finally be like i've learned how to just blank slate enjoy yeah. this well it's hard to jump genres it's it hard is. to like a little bit of everything it is and then prepare yourself like mentally for those places. Yeah, it's hard to go from end game to this. Yeah, right. But, for the, sure. but the thing is that this movie does have enough wit and heart and charm that even if my brain's not fully turned off, I can still enjoy it. And that's yeah. what I need, yeah. I think, to actually like a movie. Yep. Um, which which I, I do for this movie a lot. And it is because of almost mostly Matthew McConaughey's charm. Yeah. But Kate's not pulling any punches oh, no, here. Kate Hudson's well, for great sure. in this. Yeah, you've got to be able to. It, it might be pretty easy for you to disappear and it only be about Matt, but she does a good job of making it a pretty 50-50 split. Yes, and sometimes with these like mastermind type characters of like they're so good at playing one way and being the other, yeah. it's hard to make them seem intelligent mm-hmm. and actually intelligent in their schemes. Right. She does such a good job of being like believably conniving yes. where it's like, oh, you're brilliant. Like you're both an evil genius. Them. I feel like really? both of them yeah, are doing I that agree. well. Yeah. I think we get a lot of good shots of either one half of the conversation has like turned their head and we get a facial reaction from somebody else. Like those, you don't think it carries that much weight, but it does. Like to see just that moment of like, I can't believe that didn't work. Or, you know what? Not going to say anything because there's a job at stake. Yeah, their nonverbals really, really sell it. They were great. Yeah. We were really good. Yeah, I agree with that completely. So once we get their meat cute, and boy, it's cute. It's really cute. We go to dinner. And I just got to say, what a move to make right out the door your first date lobster and crab legs. This was almost my super dumb because of how sad it made me. That you weren't eating lobster and crab legs? I'm allergic. Oh, yeah, oh, that's right. No. And I love them. Oh, no, dude. I'm allergic to lobster and crab. Just drenched in I that butter? It. I know. It's so good. Dude, just pull, oh, pull a hitch and Benadryl yourself up and go after no, it. No, don't do that. No. Do that. Don't do that. <laughs> um, something has happened. And I'm, and I'm, yes, this is, I'm playing it up a little bit. So I don't like mouth noises. Yeah. There is someone who is exempt. A lot of his charm in this movie, and especially in this scene, Matt McConaughey's mouth is wide open. He is chewing the and talking. The whole time he's chewing. At the same time. Yeah. yeah. And I sat there unaffected. Interesting. I sat there unaffected. I can't remember, like, what is, is there a movie that it's like someone is cured of something and they're just sitting like there exposure like, therapy? oh, everything's new now. You know, I don't know if it's, it's not like these videos, like actual videos of someone who's getting like color and blindness corrected glasses. So I don't really know like where I've seen it before, but right. I, I felt in line with someone who has... I thought you were asking for another mouth noise movie. And I was no, about no, no, to, no, 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 no. Give no, you no. some Denethor no, no, Return no, no. of the someone, King. <laughs> <laughs> ooh, ooh, do hate that. It's cherry tomatoes. Someone oh. has... Sing me a song. Someone who has been uh, just cured of something. Like it just felt like, oh, this is the exception. Interesting. So it's not that you're cured, it's that you found the one like, you're ah, immune ah, to. Ah, ah, ah. Like he was just like yeah. growling and chewing. I yeah, he really was. Half of his language is mouth noises. He reacts in almost everything I've ever seen him in by being yeah. like, by being like, yeah, like that. Kind of, yeah, and it's like, yeah, you gotta like it to like him because half of what's coming out of his face is just straight mouth noise. Yeah, and he's got this like 
if a wolf had the best best orthodontist in the world. Yep. He's just got these canines <laughs> that are yeah. just like, like he it, could just turn into some sexy shirtless. Oh, most wolves are shirtless. Do you remember? He should be in a werewolf. We've movie. watched Twilight. We know this. Do you they are always Gopher from Winnie the Pooh. Yes. Yeah. Just make that a little sexy. He's got, he's got that whistly air. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. Just I make like that, that a little sexier, and that's Matt, Matt McConaughey kind of- belongs in the cartoon version of Robin Hood that Disney did as some kind of character, either yeah. the rooster or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Not even a hot take. Everybody, everybody knows it. Sheriff of Nottingham. He would be great. Yeah. Yeah. As Dang. Cher. <laughs> as Cher. <laughs> no matter how hard I try. <laughs> Sorry. Very good. Not bad. Not bad. They head back to Ben's apartment. Yep. And uh, they're both kind of playing their game here. That multi CD player is sweet. Yeah, I really want one. <laughs> yeah, does he start it by just tapping it? Yes. Uh huh. Is that how it works, no. or is that a Fonzie move? Fonzie type it's a Fonzie move. move. Okay, for sure. very good. Yeah. So he's Fonzie good. Type move. And Not that it was intentional, but yeah. jumping in Fonzie kind of move. Love it. And uh, he blows out the candles, which I get, I get, but I don't get. Like, well, he lit are, them, and he was going to make it too. We, we sports, we sports yeah, sure. but he blew him out. But then she, she caught him blowing him out, and he just keeps blowing him out, and it's really charming. That's he the just plays it. He I know. doesn't try and be like, "Oh, you caught me." It's just yeah. like, "Hey," I and then the my scene mind. where she's on the bed and he's sitting on the. He's like, "Come on over drawers. here, sit on this instead." Yeah, it's very good. <laughs> very good. It's very good. And then uh, we sports is canceled for the night. Canceled, and uh, she leaves her purse, mm-hmm. which is the first play. Yep, in a long series. Long series of plays. Really good play. Right. That conversation with the roses and the, she says, it's terribly embarrassing. I hate it. And he goes, oh, well, you're welcome. (laughs) I got your tickets. You're taking me to the game. It's just, it really is all so charming. I keep using that word and it's because it's important in this movie. Without the charm, this movie is significantly lessened. Right. They're supposed to be really well-educated, both of them, on charm. Yeah. So we have to see it exhibited. Absolutely. Almost consistently. Absolutely. And it's interesting it really to see is them. better Hitch. Like this, we're, yeah. we're asking the same things of our characters that we do in Hitch. Very similar, yeah. And just this one works without and Hitch the pitfalls. Yeah. I agree. And it, it's interesting to see two people fighting each other with the same weapon. Mm-hmm. I think that's fun. Yeah. Like yeah, in Star Wars not- Episode 3, whenever Anakin and Obi Wan both swing their blue lightsabers at each other. Mm, yeah. It's exactly the same, dude. It is exactly the same. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> There's a lot of like weird musical breaks in this episode. This is like our first musical episode. It is. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So they go to game one of the NBA finals. Yes. Yeah. This whole thing Finally. stresses me out so much. To go get the drink and everything? Yes. Yeah, it's supposed to. I have a theory that there is a cut scene where he slips on the freshly mopped floor and dumps right? the drink that all over him. super intentional that the floor was wet right there. And his interaction with that guy at... That sweet old man. It yeah. is the perfect example though of like relatable like micro comedy of like I want that <laughs> I want one that right there the coke that you are holding right there that's, that's one. the one I want yep. like it's so good yep um, and then he of course misses the game winning Dunkarooski which I think is what the professionals call it sure dude hey Carter was that a real game that was uh, that was real basketball players I don't believe that was actual shots from a real game okay. it could have been that while they had everyone there kind of like fever pitch type vibe and then I think an abduction at a Pittsburgh Pirates oh, game. Yeah. They Just actually like, can you guys hang out for a, a scene while everybody's here. Yeah. yeah. But those were the actual players of that time. So that's you cool. had the Kings against the Knicks. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. And uh, he is downtrodden. Very much so. As he leaves. Very as much so. As he leaves so. the place. And uh, much as he is downtrodden, I'd like to head on down, pull out my knapsack. Okay. Spread out the picnic blanket. Pick a Nick. Basket, candles, little frisbee for later. Okay. And inside that basket, of course, is shout announcements. You're listening to shout announcements. It's the part where we give the shout announcements. It works for- every week, huh? Thanks, for <laughs> Gregory. Gore <laughs> listening to. Our first shout out of the episode is going to go to Tyler Station. Thanks, Tyler Station. You're where we are. Right here. I also want to give a big shout out for the first time in a while. Remind you guys, Podbean's pretty dope. Podbean's great. We pay you, you money. We put stuff put on, on you. you. Mostly. 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 Our, Our podcast. podcast. Podbean. Podbean. A better Dot way to com. cook. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't say that. Friends, the time on your wrist is ticking in a circle. The second hand 
is moving. And we're getting closer and closer to our second birthday. <gasps> and we want to celebrate our second birthday we, by... We're going to be the terrible twos. I'm telling there, you. We're <laughs> eating be, a we're, full cake on our own. Smashing it with our fingers. We want to celebrate our second birthday by interviewing your famous. Yep. Mm. And what we mean by that is your famous, we want to interview them. If you have a connection to somebody famous, we want to talk with them about movies. We we want to celebrate by interviewing the most famous person that we collectively as the two chunks community have a connection to yep. because yep. no matter how famous whether you are emperor of the whole entire universe, John, <laughs> John Stamos, Stamos or the number one staple salesman at Staples. Weirdly, also John Stamos. Weirdly, also John Stamos. Just give us your John Stamos. Wherever you are on that spectrum, you have watched and loved the movie, and that's something we all have in common. So we would love to talk to your famous. So yep. Go ahead and send in your famous, whether that's in a social media DM or to two chunks and a hunk at gmail.com. We would love to hear from you and hear from them. We would also love to hear from you via the avenue of Review. Please. Rate and review. So Please. our birthday holds a lot of significance, not mm. just because we're turning two. Terribly. And we might have a chance to talk to Lord Emperor, number one salesman Stamos. Jonathan Stamos. John, uh, John Staplemos. That two-year mark is also the mark we're going for to send in the paperwork to try and become certified critics on Rotten Tomatoes. Please. Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. And speaking of that accent... Mm. Uh, we've got a special announcement for some friends that we spent a lot of time with. We do. During uh, the uh, Do You Believe in Magic series, our friends from across the pond. Oh, yeah, they're back. They're all, here. Those, all those philosophers out there. Yeah. Very special announcement for you. Gather round and prepare. Grab your downhill juice, strap up your boots, and shave your head to a nice shiny vin for it is time for the great show of the century Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw Be prepared to become sandwich crazy and ready yourself to return to Jordan's Car Corner as we review the muscle-bound, endlessly accelerating adventures of the fastest and furiousest racers in the world. Tune in next week. And you can grab whatever you want from the cooler, as long as it's a Corona. Ah, here we go. <laughs> Thanks, guys. That was awesome from our British friends. By the way, we're back. <laughs> we're back. We're in the regular show again now. Those guys are crazy. I miss them already. Yeah, me too. I hope we get to see them again. Me too. Well, the middle of this movie somehow manages to offer up a full barrage of craziness and never, to me, feel bogged down at all. Same. Yeah. I agree. It is always funny. A lot of it is uh, Kate's improvisation. Yes. If you read that. Kate Hudson does a lot of that on the fly, which harkens to her mother, Goldie Hawn. <laughs> right. Yeah. Very much so. So, and I saw a lot of it here, especially well, in just this thought movie. about that. Connection. Goldie Hawn, Kurt Russell. Right. There we go. Kurt Russell, Fast and Furious. Ah, uh, here we go. Same universe confirmed. There we go. <laughs> it's, it's all brilliant. the same universe. What if, what if Matthew McConaughey's Ben, Ben Barryson? What's his name? I don't know his name. Ben what, Blingerman. Ben Blingerman. Brett what, Benjamin. What if he rolls up on his motorcycle in Hobson Shaw? Oh my gosh. I would lose my mind. I mean, I'm there for anything. I'm here for anything. I'm there for anything. He'd be a great anything. addition. Uh, now, shout out to Philip Page on Instagram who totally called out the obvious joke that we missed last week. That Betty White's going to roll up on her Paul Walker in the next Fast and Furious. Oh, no. There it is. Man. Somebody ever say something and you get mad that you mm. didn't say that? Thanks, That's Phil. what I felt when I read that Instagram message. Big no, thanks to you, Phil. Now, Kate Hudson has this insane ability to go from full-blown tears crying to mischievous laughter instantly. Kinda and crazy. I am consistently impressed every time she does that in this movie. Yep. It is yep. so good. Now, I don't remember the exact order of everything, but we get a crazy dog. 
Yeah. That is so funny. We get some fun nicknames for some Wiimotes. We get uh, <laughs> Crawl the Warrior King. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is everything I wanted to happen this episode is. Yep. <laughs> Thank you guys for delivering. Hey, you're welcome. Yes. Um, I do I want to talk a little bit about the ruined dinner and how great that is. Yes. His A plus move is this cherry glazed rack of lamb. Which looks so good. I've by never the way. wanted to eat movie food. Quite this much. I mean, um, wrong. The cheese pizza from a goofy movie. Yeah, you're right, though. Does look very good on that waterbed. But <laughs> everything that he cooks looks delicious. And her turn to I wish I ate meat made me like physically cringe thinking about spending all of this effort to make yep. this delicious meal oh, and then finding out that the person you are trying to woo yep. doesn't is a, eat. Is a woojitarian. A woojitarian. <laughs> And then her, my boyfriend thinks I'm fat in the vegan restaurant is brilliant. Like this whole sequence is masterful. 100%. Just breaking down Ben to his core. Yep. Yeah. And I feel for him. But she is just delivering the coolest performance. I, I love her in this movie. Really? Yeah. I really She's do. She's great. I really do. And I'm glad that we've had two movies in a row where the female lead is just so good at what she's doing. Oh, yeah. Agreed. That is awesome to me. Um, particularly you know because I, I feel like it was lacking early in yeah. our series. This is a complete non sequitur, but I have to say it. Benjamin Barry, played by Matthew McConaughey. Andy Anderson, played by Kate Cudson. Cudson. <laughs> Right, that's crazy, man. That's wild. No, wild. Those names were cute, though. Andy Anderson. I'm a sucker for some good alliteration. Same. They sound like early 60s Stan Lee comic book names. Yeah, really Oh, does. yeah, for sure. Spider- Peter Parker. Hey. Spider-Span. Yeah, Spider-Span, Spider-Span dude. Peter Parker. Peter Parker. Tony Tark. Matt May. <laughs> Happy. <laughs> Wait, isn't his last name Hogan? Yeah, it is. Oh, happy Hogan. Happy Hogan. Yeah. Of course, brother. <laughs> <laughs> so the truth is I'm trying to put off getting to the part that I really want to talk about. Tell me. But if we need to go there, I say let's go there. Let's go. It's our podcast. Have it your way. So when everything goes crazy, everybody around the world is recommending couples therapy. And Catherine Hahn gets in on the game, embarrasses them at couples therapy, and mm-hmm. then suggests that they go see Ben's family. Mm-hmm. And is it Staten Island? Yeah. So they go, they take the ferry, and they head over to Staten Island. Everything on Staten Island is my super pump for this movie. Same. Whoa. Guys. Doge. Mm-mm. Guys. Get out of here. Uncle Toots a lot is my super dumb. Oh, that's dumb. fine. I don't Just care about that. Just his character? He felt too goofy for this. Oh, it was okay. a little silly. It was a He doesn't silly. fit with this movie. Okay. I get it. I, I love his family. His yeah. parents were perfect. It felt so cast. fun and like realistic. Yeah. It like was a, awesome. Yeah, like, I loved it. The the charm is turned up. Yeah. His family is great. Playing BS. Yes. Like everybody talking and being so kind. Her being affected by their kindness and like not expecting it. Do you think people fed off of? Because from what I have seen before in other movies from Matt and Kate, that they do have something that other people feed off of in terms of like a... I think so, yeah. Realism, just goofing off, legitimately smiling and enjoying the scenes shared together. The the scene where she is helping, or where the family is helping her cheat at BS yes. to beat him felt felt like something that I have sat through in my that life. just you know, happened. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And him standing up and getting so mad and throwing the cards. And yeah, and he's just going to hang out with the kids. He's everybody yes. and he's so mad. Like... It is such a realistic... I love it. You know, somebody who wins a lot but isn't a sore loser. Right. Like, they're mad that they lost, but they're fine. Knows himself and, enough that he does kind of need to leave the room right, right now. Like, yeah. it, it was just this perfect blend of like, that's a real person. Yeah, I and, love and that. I love that scene. Callie yeah. and I were like smiling the whole time. And we were like, his family's great. This yep. is so good. Um, and then <laughs> I love his reaction when they're splashed by the truck when mm-hmm. he's trying to teach her how to ride the yeah. motorcycle. And he just yes. like hucks his snow okay, cone as hard as he can. Uh, this was almost my super dump, though. The, there are three separate instances, starting with that Keith Urban song where they're, where they're riding a motorcycle, <laughs> where it just becomes a music video. You know what I'm talking about? The Keith Urban song where it's just, we fade everything except for their dialogue. Right, but... There's the scene where they're playing Wii Sports, 
and it's just music. And then there's another scene later on that is literally just music. That okay. is a very much rom-com thing. Okay, though. And it just felt like a place, like it was just there. No, I fully disagree with you, Carter. Okay. My super dump is the, not the OST soundtrack, but the oh. soundtrack songs, like like sure, licensed sure, songs sure, sure, in this sure, movie. Sure. The worst Pretty bad. In any movie I've ever seen. Oh my gosh, pretty bad. so ridiculous. Yes, it's really bad. Because at least it's like when Evanescence comes on in Twilight, you're like, yeah, but what do you expect? Wake me up. But this was just like, what movie were they scoring? I know. Yeah, it's that was pretty crazy. bad. It felt like they were like, Matthew McConaughey has an accent. We need a country boy. How about Keith Urban? It's just like the song selection and you're right. Like it was just like crank the song up to 11, everything else down to three until that's done. Like, let's just roll with it. I hated that the music. That was the only, the only point that pulled me out of the movie. That's when I looked down and checked my phone to see like, right. okay, what time is it? How much more and do I have left? The, the, the actual Are the soundtrack Rangers itself winning? Has, has some very Santa Claus one oboe. Yeah, <gasps> that's right. Yeah, I thought of that too. Musically, the, the sonic profile of this film <laughs> is just... A, a treat. I get that. that I thought you understand. were just saying the fact that there was like a music, like a montage at all. No, I don't mind that at all. It okay. is the song selection is bizarre okay. Okay. I think and I, bad. I think I need less montages. Okay. I get three 90 second montages. Give me one three minute montage. Okay. Oh, I'd rather have three 90 seconds than one three. I'm somewhere three between. I get, I'm I get a, little, fine where it was, a but... little Suicide Squad music whiplash <laughs> from all that. Yeah. Yeah, it was, the music was rough for me in this one, boys. Yeah. That was a tough the, one. The Wii Sports bathroom scene, uniquely rom com I mean, I thought it was done well. Yeah. If, 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 I mean, I'm not going to give a critical eye to all the love scenes, the Wii Sports scenes. I hear you, but the, I was just like, is it famous? Like, right outside. Oh, yeah, sure. They're like... In this house. That's the way we do it on Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> you just got to let go of your mainland inhibition. <laughs> You're on, on island time. You're on island time now, oh, baby. Oh, that's good. There's Woody. <laughs> Matthew McConaughey can rock the heck out of a leather jacket. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's too good. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I mean, anything, yeah. That was the one thing that he wore that I was like, you can keep it on. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> don't Otherwise, change. take that shirt don't out. Change. Grab your Jimbe. Coming home. <laughs> head down to head down to Kilgore. <laughs> Play some tunes. Yeah. It's very good. I'm trying. When they get back you got to do one. You gotta do one before we end the episode. I just did. It's too good. Oh yeah, perfect. I got the scratch and everything. Yeah, what are you talking about? It was good. (laughs) It's the only thing I can say is kind of him, and it almost sounds a little bit like Goofy is doing a Matthew McConaughey impression. (laughs) I was about to say it sounds like if Mater watched Interstellar and was like, (laughs) I sound like that guy. (laughs) Oh, I thought you were saying his reaction to Interstellar. (laughs) Too good. It's like Tele Mater, but without the too good. Oh my gosh! (laughs) Excellent. Upon arrival home from Staten Island, though, mm-hmm. that's when we get tickets to Game 7. And I know that Game 7 is a big game because it is always the last one because it's an odd number, which means that each team has won three games. Mm, sure. It's the last one you could have. It's not always the last one. It doesn't always go to that's seven. That's why I said each team has won three games. Very good that's math. What I said it. You did good. Because they do the games. I feel you. To the who wins. You got it. And he invites her to the party for... Delour crystals, mm-hmm. diamonds, yeah. mm-hmm. 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 right? Yes. I mean, I'm right. Yeah. And this was what, like, fourteen, fifteen million dollars of actual diamonds that were used in this. Goodness, scene. I did not see that. Is that the real? necklace she's wearing is like over three million dollars. Oh, it makes you want to throw up. Wow. That big yellow one's real. Oh, yeah. Holy moly! Are yellow diamonds better than no idea white ones? Because I always thought, you know, one of the four C's is clarity. Yeah. But I guess color, I mean, color, it could be... I always assumed it was clarity, like, does it make you understand things better about your life? It could be that. You look at the diamond, the, you're like, I should change some things about me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I the blood diamond better. is, you know... And then there's the one that Michael Caine talks about. Was that a... No, that was a ruby. Size of a tangerine. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of a tangerine. <laughs> Wait, no, that turned into Matt a little bit. A ruby the size of a tangerine. Hey, Matt, I think it's good. That is so good. Hey, Matt, what's the drink that he's going to order when he gets to France? I'm going to sit down and get myself a nice furly branker. <laughs> know if that's actually what the drink is called. <laughs> that's what brinker. he says. I have no idea if that's what it is. It's like <laughs> a fairly brinker. A fairly brinker. I do. It might be one word. It might be it might be fully brinker. Might He's be the probably actual name. that British. 
that there's a couple things that we just don't catch because we're American. He just said green tea. <laughs> Hardly brain <cut. laughs> So they go to the party. And uh, things get a little wild here. I, I'm not a fan of Mrs. DeLauer. She creeps me out. Yeah. Uh, She's supposed to creep me out. I get some yeah. some serious Lucille 2 vibes from her. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. Uh, what's her name? <laughs> Oh my goodness. Liza Minnelli. Liza Minnelli, yeah. yes. Uh-huh. That's yeah, great. It's so good. <laughs> Just she creeps me out very much. Yep. And uh I do love our musical showdown that we get at this party. It's my super dumb. Is this is it really? Whoa. Mm-hmm. That was my super dumb. Tell it's me. so strange because because of how you invited Matthew McConaughey to your sing-along campfire time. So because of how perfectly ridiculous this movie is, it's weird to me that this, one of the more ridiculous moments... Sets you over the top a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It was... Maybe I'm supposed to think that they're so in love that they don't care about the careers they've been working for the first hour and 40 minutes for. <laughs> That's a good point. But it was just kind of like, he's still going to get the job after this? And... Yeah, I don't know. It it was all forgiven, and that was tough for me. And but I don't know how it's going to be played out. That it's like, you know oh, it's fine. This? You just were in a tussle. I love this being your super dump because oftentimes you are the one to remind us. You don't need to be super dumping something. It's not a grounded movie, but it's so funny to me that these types of things stick out to individual <sighs> people in weird ways. I know. Because to me, I'm watching going, they foreshadowed this earlier with this same song and her singing it, and now we're back and they're turning it against each other. Yep. And, I tried and you're to, like, but their jobs though. There is and it makes dude. total sense to me. I there know. is somebody who could listen to our show, to our super pumps and super dumps, and perform incredibly accurate psychoanalytics on Probably that, based so. on what sticks out to they're me. Be like, Doge hates old people and rich Guys, yeah, <laughs> yes. We have a champion of the the people, the middle class people, young middle class. <laughs> <laughs> Rise up! Have you lost your keys in the trash as well? <laughs> Dumpster um, meat. Probably. <laughs> um. Yeah, I don't. I can't. I can't put a finger on it. And I tried to find something else. Yeah. Not that I felt like there was going to be backlash, but I had an idea that you would. Like someone would bring up the fact that I do no, talk about I like, love that hey, this is don't do that dump. in a rom-com. But yeah, it's, it was just, but I can't think of a different way that I would have actually enjoyed. Like the client, like the yeah, sure. precipice. But there. So they almost but, rode themselves into a corner. Right. You, I think yeah. that that is the beauty of this show format though, mm-hmm. is, is there are things that bother me endlessly about movies that you're like, I have no problem setting that aside. Like right. Betty White. And then and then the reverse is true in a completely different and yet very similar way. And I yeah. think that's so interesting. Doge, I think you're right. I think somebody with more knowledge of how people function could <laughs> listen to this and pinpoint our own biggest yeah. insecurity. Yeah, probably. Something that's fun and gets to be just ours alone and Adam is that how because, is, because this is... No, well, that that's not fun though. Uh, because this is a podcast, you only get to hear us, you don't get to see us. Right. But the nonverbals, especially in shows that are complete wild cards, and we're not really sure how each other is going to feel about it. Right. Like I could tell y'all's energy about what we were about to talk about was not mine. Right. <laughs> and so then that's why I was like, oh, I'm a super dumb. <laughs> I didn't like it. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you. Uh, <laughs> I feel like some every now and then, if I'm just really honing in on something that I don't want to look at y'all's opinion. I just close my eyes when I'm saying it. (laughs) I'm like, I don't feel this way. But So I like that Ben keeps the dog. I do too. But girl, as a dog lover, that is an ugly dog. That's That's an ugly ugly dog. dog. There's a lot of fans of ugly dogs out there. I know, yeah. I can get on board with one that's so ugly. Cute, cute, cute. ugly dog, yep. But that one's just ugly, ugly to me. Different haircut, maybe change my mind. I like the clothes. I would would keep clothes on The sweater's good. Yeah. The sweater's very good. Um, I am a big fan of the motorcycle chase down at the end. Yes. The go-getter champ. And he, when he realizes that Catherine Hahn is her friend and not the therapist, he yeah. pops back and he goes, you're not a therapist. You owe me $300. Yeah. As I, he's running out. I just, I'm going to use the word again. I don't care. Charming. Yeah. yeah. Very much. Very much. He, he does get to do, so do you know how he was discovered? In, to go into acting? I do believe I do, but... I don't. It, it I makes don't. perfect sense for him, okay? 
It makes complete sense for Matt McConaughey to Wait. launch a career that would win an Oscar. Hot yoga instructor. <clears throat> Not hot yoga in- instructor, but the guy who was making Dazed and Confused. Yeah. They were writing it. They needed that character and they hadn't found him yet until they met a young actor that was their waitress at Applebee's and thought he was just perfect and said, hey, we're about to do this movie. We think you'd have a good role. We'd love for you to come in and read Did they lines. love him because he was acting as their waitress? Well, no, I just think, I, right? But what's it's like, he naturally, I do not think we get, outside of things he would do later in his dramatized, amazing, that we talked yeah. earlier, is like, oh, that doesn't yeah. make sense. But like, I think for rom-com, it's just Matt being Matt. I think so too. More than any other actor that we've seen in any of these. I think so too. I'm feeling really guilty because I was making fun of you a second ago and you're making a great point. Yeah. You called him a waitress. I don't Twice. know why. I don't know why that's funny to me. <laughs> Waiter. I get it now. You were saying he was acting as a waitress. I was being a silly boy. That's okay. I'm but, so, I'll never do it again. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was, it just feels like if I was to give any actor and the great career they would have, if I was just going to let it be fate, like just this accident almost, I would love for it to be him. Yeah. Yeah. Like that he would just stumble into this role. Yeah. Yeah. And then they're just like, hey man, just keep doing that. Just, Can you do just that? do that kind of forever. The only thing that changes is your job. And even then, you're going to wear the same stuff no matter what you do. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know? so true. But yeah. his range, I could, I could do a whole episode just about him I know. as an actor. And he took we a complete... A yeah, that would be awesome to do a McConaughey series sometime. I don't think so. We'll get there. Depends on what you paired up with. I've got if some plans. I've got some plans shaking around in the, in the old caboose. Well, they're reunited and it feels so good. And then that's sort of the end. The nonverbal that Carter gave me in between reunited and it feels so good was very much... I want to kick Jordan under the table. <laughs> <laughs> no, Just no. through the back window. No. I, this was a, so I super pumped the end of the proposal. Because I think there's a lot to be said about the very end, the, the actual drawbridge here of these two meeting and they've decided it's love. There's much in that line. And I loved it, loved it, loved it in the proposal. I liked it here too. It wasn't my super pump. I like that he calls back to BS. Yes, 100%. And Is that what you had, to say? Yes. Oh. Yeah. And and that he has like a smirk that lets you know like he knows he got her. And he brought the fern before which she is even turns very around. funny. Clitch. Set it in her helmet. Love it. There were so many little things that I liked a lot. Yeah. But yeah, I did like the ending. I didn't want to just kind of like blow over it, but I did I did like him catching her. Yeah, that's good. It's mm-hmm. good stuff. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. think it's time. Do it. To rate this movie. Got it. We here at Two Chunks and a Hunk have perfected the art of movie rating using science. Science! That's right. The one that lets bees fly. Okay. We've created the scientific cinema scale, and it is perfect and as follows. The best thing we can ever say about a movie is own it, don't lend it, buy Buy that that poster. poster. The next best thing we can ever say about a movie is buy it. After that, it's going to be rent it, and then stream it. After that is forget it. And last, but certainly least, the worst thing we could ever say about a movie God has forsaken us. We all went. We all went McConaughey. We all went for it. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. I'll go first. I will give this movie a buy it. I like this movie. I've actually watched it twice in the last six months. Nice. And I would do it again in another three just for the funsies. There it is. Uh, I'm going to give this movie a buy it as well. This was really great. This yeah. might be my yeah. favorite one that we watched for. Oh, I'm so glad you really liked this for uh, for Summer of Love too. Also, we didn't even talk about how perfect it is that Summer of Love two is bookended with Sleepless in Seattle. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, that's right. How they go to see Sleepless. they go to see Sleepless in Seattle in this one. It's yep. fun. It is yep. fun. Yeah, it's great. But buy it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just go for it. I want to head down to Austin with this movie and uh, find a local distributor. And roll something up and get by on this movie. I want to get by. Like, hi. Anyways. Oh, I'm okay. With you. Yeah, uh, you got it. You got it. I'm going to buy the movie yeah. as well. Um, it, it just it just feels like it falls into rom-com so very well. It, it does. does. It, it seems quintessential almost, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, the, the gap between this and the proposal, which are both by it's almost all around for us, maybe. Yeah. So. Um, the gap on voting though was massive. I mean, I think we knew this was going to be the last, like the finale of Summer of Love, like 
hours the into soft, the voting. The soft finale. It, yeah. Yes. It, yes. Because the real, the real, the finale real finale is coming screaming down the screaming highway, screaming <laughs> down. No, but this took an early Lion King esque lead. It did. it did, and I think it's just because it's pretty universally liked. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know a lot of people that like rom coms that don't like this movie, right? And I can absolutely, of course, see why. Yep. And it, it, it really all... Something that I've learned this time around, I think last time we took a look at some... Um, a different style of romance movies. This one was a little more traditional rom com Very much This so. summer. Very much so. And, and what I'm feeling like I'm learning is that the secret ingredient 100% of the time is charm. Yeah. For this style of movie. Or just yeah. lean in. Yeah. Like, just don't try and... I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. No, I think that's good. Decide what you are and be that. Yeah. Yeah. It's good life advice. Yeah. Once you stop trying to be who you're supposed to be, then you can be who you are. Thanks, Thor's mom. Yeah. I am realizing now that was Thor's mom. (laughs) It was. My respect has returned to where it once was. Good. Perfect. Not much higher anymore. Where I was like, (laughs) Tosh, crochet that for me real quick. (laughs) Make sure you tune in next week. Listen to us cover that new ooh, hit smash single, the fat one. Yes. Hobbs and Shaw. It's going to be fast. Oh Another my gosh. one. And Furious. Yes. Spears. Oh, like, like Maori Spears yeah. throwing it. My, oh. mind, my mind was solely and exclusively focused on Brittany. Brittany. Oh, yeah, really? me too. <laughs> Oops. Oh, I did it again. To end today's episode, I'd like for us each to say our name. And then, which of the two lead actors in Hobbs and Shaw we would make very skinny? For two chunks and a hunk. <laughs> what? I'm Jordan Wonders. And I would make Dwayne The Rock Johnson <laughs> very skinny. This is awful. two choices and there's three of us <laughs> what am I supposed to do I'm the third one I'm those Jason Statham's gonna be a toothpick boy <laughs> wait I, did, I just pick one and I'm Carter also Jason Statham he's skinny again guys <laughs>